Good evening. Uh, my wife and I today went to see a movie we've been hearing about called The Sound of Freedom. If you get a chance, I don't know, maybe you can't take it, but if you get a chance. You need to see that. It's a true story of, of uh, a man by the name of Tim Ballard. And Tim was working for Homeland Security. And I don't really know all of the, the, the details of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the story, but God kind of led him in his assignments to children uh, that have been uh, trafficked, have been bought and sold, and uh, the, the, the scum that's involved in, in that, and I don't know if you're aware, America uh, is the most guilty nation on earth, because people with money in America go south or wherever to buy children, buy, it's just, uh, it's just hard to, uh, it's just hard to imagine. But Jim Caviezel, who played Jesus in, in uh, the passion of the trans, uh, of, of the Passion played the part of Tim Ballard. Uh, did an excellent job. The, the thing is, the enemy fought. <laughs> he fought tooth and nail to keep that movie from being released. Because, now I don't know all the details, but as I understand it, uh, Disney had 
the rights to the movie. Uh, it was made five years ago, I think, but they weren't going to release it because it wasn't saying what they like to say. And uh, Tim Ballard and, and the people that worked with him, Caviezel and, 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 and many other Christians prayed and uh, raised a bunch of money to, uh, to get it from Disney so that they could release it. And, uh, and it, the first weekend it was out was the same weekend that uh, Indiana Jones, their, which is a big deal. I, I enjoyed the, the series of the Indiana Jones series, but it just beat the car out of it and a bunch of other movies that have come out and people can't understand why why it became so popular, but uh, you and I know why. <laughs> people are hungry for the truth and, and uh, for, and as I was sitting there watching the movie, I'm probably not the best guy to talk about it, but you're going to have to tolerate me tonight because I got to say some things that are not the most pleasant things to hear or even to say. But as I was watching the movie, uh, the Holy Spirit just whispered in my ear, said, you know, when I said the gates of hell are not going to be able to prevail against my church, and it's because he's, he's going to send us into hell to pull some people out. He's, he's raising up some people that, that he can fill with his glory and his power that will go and do exploits, do some things that are crazy and don't make sense, but that tear down uh, some of the things that Satan's doing in the earth. Uh, I so enjoy hearing Barry, Pastor Barry talk about his family, his father, his grandparents, the, the, the I don't know, I can't think of the term, but, but the, the, the family, the, the, the heritage right. that he has, that his family has, that's such an incredibly beautiful thing right. that God has been able to do in, in that family and with them. Right. Not that everything's perfect, I know that. But I'm going to tell you a story a little bit different tonight. My mother had my sister born to her when she was somewhere around 14 years old. The authorities took the baby away from her had adopted out. I've got a sister out there somewhere. I have no idea where she is or she's probably not alive because she's a couple years older. And the man that is responsible for my father spent some time in prison because of, of that. But when he got out, she went back to him because if you're such a horrible person, you feel so terrible about yourself, you know nobody else is going to want you. So 
So she went back to him. I was born to her when she was about 16, when she was 16. She had seven children over her lifetime. Lost four of them. She had three babies die in her arms because he had put her out in the country away from everybody because anyway, I don't know why. But Three babies died of malnutrition and uh, living in a, in a cabin that you could see through the walls in the wintertime. Anyway, I'm not telling, telling you this so you feel sorry for me. I'm telling you this because there are people in this world that God's going to send us to that aren't the people that we see every day. Anyway, my father spent two different terms of his life in penitentiary because he liked little girls. I have no, I have no idea, no understanding of how a person can feel that way or be that but that's the reality of this world there are people that are that way when I was I don't know three or four years old I'm, I'm not exactly sure a lady in an assembly of God church came and knocked on the door of this cabin where my mother was living. Invited her to church. She went to church and met a man who really loved her. She got saved and She died at 41 years old of cancer. And I had just met Laura and introduced her so she knew, but she never got to meet any of my children or any of that. And uh, I have a brother that's a year younger, or he was, he passed away several years ago. And I have a sister who was 10 years old when my mother passed away. And my mother went through agony to get her adopted by a Christian family before she passed so that my father would have no way of getting, getting her. And my sister's married to, a, to an ordained minister and uh, so good things can come of, of some really bad and terrible things that, that can happen in life. But I don't want to make it sound too bad because, you know, my father was gone since, since I was about nine years old. Uh, never saw him again until a few days before I graduated from high school. <clears throat> he came on to borrow some money. But I tried to help him over the years and uh, we, 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 we did and it's it's a bondage. I don't know how I, I can't describe it. I can't understand it. But there's some demonic forces at work in 
in the earth. That people need to be delivered from. And we're God's people on this earth to be involved in that. Anyway, now that I got you totally depressed, <laughs> I hope I hope you're not. I, I just uh, um, I I just like I said, I I so appreciate and and young people build a family structure that God is involved in and and make a a, a, a place for them. And, Raise your children, introduce them to Jesus at, at a young age, and uh, just uh, that's such 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 a powerful thing to hear testimonies of families like that. Yeah, Reverend Rich, I believe that God's leading us into some ministries that will include those people. Yeah. Let us choose some of those people. Yeah, that's and what. That's yeah, what. Those They yeah. Want, they want people. They yeah. Want to, yeah. You know, Jesus. We're supposed to be an emergency. We're supposed to be a hospital for the sick, yeah. you know, for the lost, for the hurting. And I believe that that's that's where we're headed. You're absolutely right. I believe that. I believe that with every bone in my being. And the reason some of us have gone through some things is so maybe we can understand some things that and people are going through. Right. I want to ch change direction just a little bit. A few months ago, in fact, I think it was before my open heart surgery, uh, we live in a fifth wheel trailer. Don't feel sorry for us. It's very comfortable. We, we enjoy it. And uh, uh, if there was more than just Laura and I, we wouldn't. But the two of us, we enjoy it. It's, it's very comfortable, and and uh, and uh, we're living on our son's property, and and it's not costing us very much. And uh, so it it's a miracle that that God provided for us. But months ago, electricity went out. <laughs> the plug where the power cord goes in, uh, one of the one of the prongs on it uh, got corroded and burned. And anyway, to make a long story short, I I spent a day and a half uh, running around finding parts and fixing and, and doing things. And after I got it together, it was on a Wednesday night. And I was tired. But when I got involved in the church here, I told the Lord that I wanted to be involved in helping build something here. So I thought, well, I got a good excuse. I can stay home because I'm tired. <laughs> so I texted the pastor and anyway, I think he said okay or something. I wasn't much sympathy there, but anyway. I... <laughs> I took a shower and laid down. And that mean old Holy Spirit jumped all over me with all fours. And he said, he said, I'm trying to build something here. You said you were going to help. And this doesn't look like much help. When you come up with an excuse that you think it warrants you to skip out. And I'm not, I'm really not giving a commercial for Wednesday night. Well, maybe I am, I don't know. But, <laughs> but it's, 
it's, it's different than that. It's more than that. Because, and so since then I've prayed a bunch of times and about it and asked forgiveness and, and the Lord said, I'm putting together a house here. I'm putting together a team. And if that team is going to be a Sunday only team, I can't accomplish what I want to do through this house. I can't do it. I don't know what that means. But I know it means that I better be here on Wednesday night and support as, as much as I can and during the week pray and, and, and get involved from time to time as, as he leads me. But he said, I'm going to teach this people And I don't know why the word, it, it, it just said, he said, you're going to have to hear me hard. Hear me hard and lean on one another hard if you're going to accomplish what I purpose this house to accomplish. we got to lean you got to hear him hard because he's going to say some things to us that we haven't heard before, that we may not understand, that those around about us don't understand. The church down the road, he may not be saying the same thing to. Because I believe he has... Uh, And a, a, a job for each church and it may not be the same as the other church I believe that God calls different people different bodies different organizations to accomplish different things in the kingdom and I don't I don't know exactly what God's calling us to. But he's calling us to something that is going to require us to hear him hard. I don't know what that means except God, it, it may be hard to push through to, to hear, to put aside the things that, that would keep us from hearing him and, and hard to 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 understand or or I don't know exactly but he said you're going to hear me hard and then he said you're going to have to learn to lean on each other hard and I said are you just picking on me? <laughs> Are you saying these kind of things to other people? I don't know. None of my business. Because it's his business. And he does what he, what, he, what he needs to do. What he desires to do. But I, I, I so appreciate uh, this house. When I walked in the first time, it just... Uh, Mr. Leaving to worship. I hadn't been in worship for a while. Real worship. I'd been to some places where they sang some nice songs. That's nice. But I've been in worship before. And when you've been in worship, real worship, singing a song doesn't satisfy, does it? It, it doesn't satisfy. It didn't satisfy my heart. And I walked in here and the worship and anyway, it just felt like home. And 
So here I am. You're stuck with me. But I keep praying, Father, reveal to us what your purpose for us is. Make us able to hear, to understand, and to accomplish what, what you're calling us to. And cause us to cause us to listen hard and to learn to lean hard on one another. Because he's doing some things in us that we've all seen. Uh, and uh, I don't know where it all goes. I've got something in Matthew 25 that I want to share just real briefly. Uh, Matthew 25 is uh, the parable of the ten virgins. And as I was reading this, the Holy Spirit said, showed me something that I hadn't really seen before. These virgins were, actually I think what they were were bridesmaids. Could we say that? Could we say that they were bridesmaids? Because that's kind of what it looks like that they're bridesmaids. What is a bridesmaid's duty? What's a bridesmaid's responsibility? To get the bride ready for the bridegroom? Get her ready, ready for the wedding? Mm -hmm. And as I was reading this, said, maybe I should read it just real quick so you kind of know what, uh, I've got my New American Standard Version here. Uh, there were, the kingdom of heaven will be compared to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were foolish, and five were prudent. And the foolish took their lamps, and they took no oil with them. But the prudent took oil and flasks along with their lamps. Now while the bridegroom was delaying, they got drowsy and began to sleep. But at midnight, there was a shout, Behold the bridegroom, come, behold the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the prudent, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the prudent answered, saying, No, there will not be enough for us and you too. But instead, go to the dealers and buy some yourself. And while they were going away to make the purchase, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him in the wedding feast, and the door was shut. This is just a story that Jesus told. Uh, we can't hold all of his parables. We can't hold uh, an exact understanding to what what it it was what it was about. But. Uh, Oil in the scripture, it seems to me, my understanding is that oil is talking about the Holy Spirit. It's talking about revelation and power. That's what the Holy Spirit came to give us, to reveal Jesus and the Father and to give us power to do what he calls us to do. There are people 
in the kingdom. And I think some of us have been there. Maybe we're there. God's called us to minister to the bride, to help the bride, the church, become ready for the bridegroom, to become ready for that great wedding feast that's coming. heard me talk before you know that I got some crazy ideas about translation I love the patient translation of the Bible it just has some things to it In verse 7, I believe, 6 or 7, in the Passion Translation, it says, The bridegroom is here. Come out and have an encounter with him. In the margin, it says, this is not just to meet him. This is actually an encounter. And, and some, somehow we've been led to believe sometimes, I think, that the call of God on our life to minister, to help the bride, some of us that have been called to, to, to share in the church or involved in doing whatever God's calling you or has called you to do, that all we need is a call. God calls us in his service. And so go out and do what he calls you to do. But he's saying, being called to be a bridesmaid isn't enough. You have to encounter the bridegroom if you're going to be able to accomplish what, what you were called to do. And the Holy Spirit is in the process of, of doing that work in our lives. The, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is wonderful. But we need a revelation of what he wants to do. I don't understand all of that. I don't think we have a full revelation of what he wants to do in this house or in, even in the church or in America. But we need, we need to have an encounter with, we need to have an encounter with the bridegroom. And we need to have our, our oil so that we can meet him the oil of the Holy Spirit doesn't just come to make us feel good dance or sing as much as all of those things can be great he wants to reveal to us himself 
He wants to reveal His Word, His purpose in our lives, His purpose in this house, His purpose in Richton, Mississippi, Perry County, all the other counties. I, like you know, I'm new to the area, so I don't know all of this stuff. By the way, I hope you voted yesterday. Don't tell me you didn't. I think that's I think that's sin for God's people. <laughs> Pardon me, but I can, I can get relax, wax eloquent as well as in as I, I get upset with Christians that don't think they need to vote. <laughs> but we gave, we, we've given America back to the devil long enough, folks. It's time for us to claim it, and we're in the process of, of, of claiming it back. But we, there's some things we've got to do that we're not, we haven't been doing like we should, and, and uh, getting involved in the political scene is one of them because uh, I mean, uh, I I went through some of the charismatic renewal back in the, in the 60s, 70s, and into the 80s. We had some tremendous, tremendous times in the Lord. When it was all over, the church had lost the schools, the politicians, uh, abortion. Washington State in 74, I think, was the first state to legalize abortion. That's where I was living at the time, I couldn't believe. But we got sloppy and let some things happen that God did not want us to do. And uh, so he said, I'm gonna give you another chance. Do you, do you think he's given us another chance? I believe he's given us another chance. And I believe he's going to enable us if we will allow him to. He wants us to have some extra oil because he wants to reveal himself, his word, his purpose, and he wants to fill us with some power to enable us to do what we know we can't do without him. Uh, hope it wasn't too bad. Anybody got anything to add? I, I appreciate input. I hope our visitors, I hope I didn't make it too bad for you telling you horror stories and stuff. He was talking about the Lord gave us another chance.
I get uh, emails a couple times a week from an organization called Intercessors for America. If you get a chance, check them out. But they were sharing the other day about there's some organizations of kids that CYC, Claim Your Campus. And these are, the first group they were talking about was four 15-year-olds in Michigan. I forgot exactly, but they, their school, their high school, they said there were fights every day. There were several fights. Kids just fighting and hating each other and so they started praying in lunchroom. And pretty soon they noticed there weren't any more fights. But they had also prayed because their school's academic uh, achievement level was F. And they said, Lord, this isn't acceptable. So they started praying, and before that year was over with, their academic level was A. The principal called one of the kids into his office and said, what are you guys doing? What's going on here? And he said, well, we've just been praying. And we... So anyway, the principal ended up going to church with one of these kids getting saved and uh, they just began to share and pretty soon they weren't praying in secret in the lunchroom anymore they were praying in the halls so all the kids walking by could see and watch and get involved and it's grown to a number of other states. I, I didn't get a chance to check that out, but claim your campus. I thought that's a great thing to think about. And these were kids in high school and junior high that are doing and it's growing and becoming more and more. So we need to pray. We need to teach our kids to pray. We need to let the Holy Spirit Give us some extra oil. Is that all right? Is that all right with you? Father, I thank you for what you've done. As I was watching this movie today, I was so reminded of what you've done in my life. And I thank you. And as I hear you say you're wanting to do something in this house that's above and beyond what we have known or expected, come and fill us. Give us some extra oil. 
Give us some revelation. Give us some power. So that we, with boldness, can go out and pull down some of these walls that, that are holding people, bondage, and hell, and the things that are going on. Just give us, open our eyes, open our hearts, open our mouths, and give us, give us your heart. Give us your heart. There's a guy I listened to 